Let us now move on to the next very important aspect of speed maths, which is finding of squares. We know that square of a number x is nothing but the number x multiplied with itself. So x square is nothing but x into x. It is very important that we find out square of the given numbers very quickly to avoid wastage of time in the exam. So in this part of the discussion, we shall see how to find out squares of the given numbers. If you want to be comfortable in finding out squares of any given number, you should be perfect with 1 to 30 squares. Generally, we are very comfortable with 1 to 10 or 1 to 15 squares. But as we go forward, for example, 27 squared or 28 squared, most of us get stuck. So make sure that it doesn't happen from next time onwards. For example, like how we know 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Same way, if I ask you what is 29 squared, you should not get struck. You should be immediately able to say that 29 squared is 841 or 27 squared is 729. So here you can see that 1, 2, 30 squares are written on the board. So remember all these values perfectly. You should not even waste a single second for any of these squares. The other point which I would like to mention here is how the units place of the square changes as the units place of the number changes. This point will be helpful in finding out square roots. For example, if you try to observe whenever a number ends with 1, whenever we see that a number ends with 1, in all these cases, the square root ends with either 1 or 9. For example, here 1, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 81 is 9. So in both the cases you find that numbers are ending with 1. So whenever a number ends with 1, square root ends with either 1 or 9. Similarly in 121 and 361, you see that square root of 121 is ending in 1, square root of 361 is ending in 9 and square root of 441 ends with 1, square root of 841 ends with 9. So very clearly whenever a number ends with 1, its square root has to end with either 1 or 9. Likewise if you observe 4. Whenever a number ends with 4, in all these cases, the square root either ends with 2 or 8. For example, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 64 is 8, square root of 324 is 18, square root of 484 is 22. That means if you observe they are ending with 2 or they end with 8. So whenever a number ends with 2, its square root ends with 2 or 8. See this pattern is very very important in finding out square roots of the numbers. So you should be very clear with the pattern of unit spaces. Again, if you observe, when a number ends with 9, its square root ends with either 3 or 7. Likewise here as well, 169 and 289, square root ends with either 3 or 7. And in 27 and 23, numbers are ending in 9, their square root ends with 3 or 7. The next one here is 6. When a number ends with 6, its square root ends with 4 or 6. Here again, numbers are ending in 6. If you observe, square root ends with 4 and here square root ends with 6. Likewise, here also, when the number ends with 6, square root ends with 4 or 6. So very clearly, whenever a number ends with 6, its square root has to end with either 4 or 6. And the other point is, if the number ends with 5, square root ends with 5. Or we can observe that whenever a number ends with 25, square root ends with 5. And for zeros, it will be zero. Whenever we have two zeros, the square root ends with one zero. Again, here we have two zeros, the square root ends with one zero. Two zeros, the square root ends with one zero. So very clearly, we can understand the pattern of the unit spaces from this table. So make sure that you remember all the 30 squares perfectly and also remember the pattern. Whenever a number ends with one, square root ends with one or nine. When a number ends with four, square root ends with two or eight. When a number ends with 9, square root ends with 3 or 7. When a number ends with 6, square root ends with 4 or 6. When a number ends with 5, square root ends with 5. And whenever a number is ending in 0, even number of zeros, the square root will also end with 0. Assuming that you all remember what are 1 to 30 squares perfectly, let us now see how to find out squares beyond 30. For example, what is 63 square? Can you tell me the answer without writing anything on paper? And the time given to you is just 2 to 3 seconds. Now that might be a little difficult for you at this moment. But if you get the right idea, then getting 63 square or any square would become really very easy for us. So let's see how to find out squares after 30. For example, as I've said, let us find out 63 square. Now what we do here is generally 63 square is taken as 63 into 63. 
and again you know that if you go by the regular method of multiplication that takes a lot of time so let us see how to get it without going by the regular method the point to be understood here is for squares from 30 to 80 for all the numbers from 30 to 80 the base is considered as 50 for example let's say we have to find out what is 65 square now 65 is between 30 and 80 so the base should be considered as 50 for 65 so 65 can be taken as 50 plus 15 that's how we break the number 65 similarly if you have to find out 72 square 72 again is between 30 and 80 so 72 should be taken as 50 plus 22 likewise let's say we have to find out 41 square 41 is between 30 and 80 so for 41 also the base is 50 that means 41 should be taken as 50 minus 9 that means very clearly we can understand that for all the numbers ranging from 30 to 80 if you have to find out the square the number should be taken as 50 plus x where x can be a positive or a negative integer depending on the value there so let us now understand how to find out 63 square based on the base of 50 63 as you can see here is between 30 and 80 so how do we split 63 it should be taken as 50 plus 13 remember it should be taken as 50 plus 13 but not 60 plus 3 every number between 30 and 80 has to be taken as 50 plus x so 63 here can be taken as 50 plus 13 now let's understand how to actually find out the square for this number we know that 50 square is 2500 so we take 25 and add 13 to this 25 that gives us 38 this is actually 2500 plus 1300 which is equal to 3800 and now the next step is to add 13 square to this result 13 squared is 169 so the answer here will be 3969 63 square is equal to 3969 i hope you all have got the idea 63 should be taken as 50 plus 13 so 50 square is 2500 whatever 13 we have here those many hundreds have to be taken so plus 1300 this gives us 3800 and the next step is add 13 square to this to get the answer so 3800 plus 169 will be equal to 3969 similarly let's say we have to find out 72 squared 72 should be taken as 50 plus 22 so this can be taken as 2500 plus 2200 whatever is the number here those many hundreds have to be added so this gives us 4700 and after getting this we have to add this 22 square 22 square is 484 so when we simplify this we get 5184 as the answer so 72 square is equal to 5184 so if you have really understood the concept here we need not even write these zeros we can simply understand that 72 is 50 plus 22 so 25 plus 22 is 47 so we write 47 and then 22 square is 484 as we have only two zeros after this we have to take 484 in this format that means 84 will be coming here and 4 will be carried forward to the hundreds place so by adding this we get 5184 as the answer so this is how we can find out squares of numbers ranging from 30 to 80. Let's take one more example. Suppose we have to find out 42 square. Now 42 we know is 50 minus 8. So it should be taken as 2500. Remember minus 8 will give us minus 800. Generally if it is plus 22 we have added 2200. When it was plus 13 we have added 1300. Because here it is 50 minus 8 we take it as minus 800. So the result here will be 2500 minus 800 is 1700 plus minus 8 square. Minus 8 square is nothing but 64. So when we add 64 we get the answer as 1764. That means 42 square will be equal to 1764. And again, if you really observe, you need not write these zeros and waste your time. We know that the base is 50, so always the first part here is 25. 25 minus 8 is 17. So we can write 17 and attach 64 to that. Why? Because 8 square is 64. So directly the square of this number is 1764. Similarly, let's say we have to find out 39 square. Now 39 is nothing but 50 minus 11. Remember, base is always 50. So 50 minus 11. So that is the reason we take it as 25 minus 11. 25 minus 11 is 14. So we get 14 in the first step. And then it was minus 11. So minus 11 square is 121. We know that there are only two places after this. Only two zeros after this. So 11 square 121 should be taken in this format. So the answer here will be 1251. 1521. 39 square will be equal to 1521. So this is how we can find out squares from 30 to 80 in just two steps. And if you really understand the method, even writing these two steps on paper is not required. 
Now, before we move on to take some more examples, let us understand the working behind this procedure. Why does this happen? How can we directly get the answer as 25 plus 22, 47, and then 22 square 484 will give us the result of 5184. That means, let us understand what actually happens behind this procedure in getting the correct answer. We know that a plus b whole squared or a plus or minus b whole squared is equal to a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared. Now the point here is when we are taking 63 squared, 63 can be split as, 63 squared can be split as 50 plus 13 whole square. Remember we are taking the base as 50, so we get 50 plus 13 whole square. Now let's understand what is the advantage in this. If we try to expand as per the formula, we get 50 squared plus 2 into 50 into 13 plus 13 squared. Now if you look at this, 50 squared is 2500 plus 2 into 50 is 100, 100 into 13 is 1300 plus 13 square is 169. And now if you compare this expansion with our shortcut trick, you find that it is quite similar to what we have done in case of a plus b whole square. For example, here you see we have 2500, 2500 plus 1300 plus 1300. We get the result as 3800 and to that we add 169. That is the reason we are able to get the correct answer as 3969. This will be equal to 3969. Now the main advantage of taking one of the terms as 50 is that when we take 2ab part we get 2 into 50 into b. 2 into 50 is always 100. So 100 into b will give us b into 100. So if it is 7 here we will have plus 700. If it is 8 here we will have plus 800. If it is plus 21 here we will have plus 2100. If it is 19 here we will have plus 1900. Likewise here if it is 22, 50 plus 22 we will get plus 2200. So that is the reason we have directly taken 2500 that is the first term plus 2200. Even in this case when we take 42 as 50 minus 8 it is 50 minus 8 whole square. So 2500 is there. Because it is minus 8, we will get minus 800. So 2500 minus 800, 1700 plus 8 square 64. So that is how we get the answer as 1764. So this is the concept behind finding out the square root in this manner. The two important advantages that we have here is first term is always fixed. First term is always 2500 and the second term is b into 100 and the third term is b square. So because first term is fixed, we need not worry about it. Always you can take it as 2500. And the second term will be b into 100. Now if I ask you what is 69 square, you can do it orally. 69 is nothing but 50 plus 19. So as it is 50 plus 19, we take 2500 plus 1900. What is 2500 plus 1900? 4400. 4400 plus 19 square. 19 square is 361. So 4400 plus 361 will give us 4761. So that is the result for 69 square. Simply take it as 50 plus 19. 2500 plus 1900 plus 19 square. So 2500 plus 1900 plus 361 will give the total as 4761. Or if you have to find out what is 46 square. 46 is 50 minus 4. So we get 2500. Because it is minus 4, we have minus 400. 2500 minus 400 is 2100 plus 4 square. 4 square is 16. So 2100 plus 16 will give us 2116. So this is how we can find out squares ranging from 30 to 80 in less than 3 seconds.